Hey everyone, this week we're going to take a look at creating a gyroid surface in Grasshopper. Most tutorials will teach this through the Millipede plugin, however recently the plugin's website has been taken down and the plugin's getting difficult to find, so we're instead going to use the Chromodorus plugin, which is a fantastic ISO surfacing plugin and it's much faster than Millipede anyway. You can download Chromodorus from foodrhino.com. So let's begin by discussing what an ISO surface is. Imagine a space pictured as a heat map describing different temperatures within the space at different locations. If we were to measure this heat map at certain points where all the temperatures were the same value, we would create a boundary or a threshold at this temperature. And if we viewed this cut in 2D, we would describe it as a contour line. In 3D space, however, measuring these temperature values would create a 3D boundary or threshold. And this is essentially how ISO surfacing works. So you could almost think of an ISO surface as a 3D contour line. We're going to create an ISO surface that is generated through a gyroid equation, which will create the 3D forms that we're after in this tutorial. You can find the gyroid equation on the gyroid Wikipedia page. So just go ahead and copy this guy down here. Um, it needs a little bit of um, working, so I'm just going to copy it up here into the web editor. We need to get some uh, brackets at that sign x, and we're actually multiplying the cos y. We want to get some brackets in that guy. Um, then we want to go plus, so addition of the sign y. So we just need a little bit of reformatting for grasshopper. We're going to multiply that by the cos z. And then we're going to add that to the sine z, multiply that by cos x, and we don't want the x equals zero at the moment. We're going to specify that when we use Chromodorus. Oops, sorry, x. So go ahead and copy that across, and I'm just going to go into Grasshopper and create an empty panel and dump that into there, just like that. So let's just move that over here, and I'm actually just going to start with a point container. I'm going to go set one point, I'm going to make that point equal 0, 0, 0, um, just reference in there. And I'm going to do a little box array um, of this point. So I want to make the cell, uh, I'm going to set one box, I'm going to start at 0, I'm going to make it a size of 1 by 1 by 1, so it's going to be a small little array. And then within that, I'm just going to have an x, y, z count of, um, well, let me, let's make it a little bit bigger in terms of a slider. I'm going to make the value 10, but I want to make the slider um, 20 in total. So I'm going to plug that into x, y, z. So we're going to get like a box or a field of these little points, which is how we're going to create the ISO surface. So I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct um, the points. because so we're going to create a little mathematical equation using... Um, this panel up here, this gyroid equation, we're going to apply it to each one of these outputs. So that's why we've got kind of like this x, y, and z input in here. I'm going to double click and just type in evaluate, and we're going to create an expression with a bunch of um, number variables. So the expression is going to be this expression coming into here. So right away we're going to get an error because um, we don't have a variable x or variable y. We need to actually call them x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and just rename that one as x. I'm going to rename that one as Y, and that should remove our error, hopefully, or maybe we need the Z first. And that error just means that we need to kind of give it a numeric parameter first. So let's go and plug those X, Y, and Z components in. Basically, what that error was saying is it needs some numbers um, being pushed in, because the way it's working is it's actually casting this. It's just telling that expression that we're putting numbers into the evaluate component. And that's going to go and spit out a bunch of um, redefined values for each of those points. And those are actually going to serve as our ISO values. So basically, we could think of them as the temperatures of our ISO surface. I'm then going to come up to Chromodorus, and we're going to go to the ISO surface tab, and we're going to sample some voxels. So I'm just going to drop the sample voxels component onto my um, canvas. The points that I want to sample of the points from this box array here, so I'm going to plug them into the points. The charges that we're going to give each point, they're going to correspond to each other, and they're going to come from this evaluate. So we've got a thousand um, values here, and they're going to represent charges in our ISO surface. So they kind of give the temperature, as we're thinking about it, um, of this kind of field that we're creating. 
Um, so I'm gonna plug those into there. They'll match up with the thousand points that we've got um, and give a temperature for each one of those points that'll help us solve our ISO surface. Then I'm gonna give a voxel size. You could kind of think of that as essentially the uh, size of the mesh faces that we're creating at the end. Just go with um, 0.25 for now, so not too big. Um, and then we're gonna have an effective range, which is basically um, the searching distance within um, our ISO surface. So um, the way this works is um, it has a searching range that speeds up the ISO surfacing process. So each one of these points that we sample is gonna have an effective range that it searches through. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that guy into here, like that. And with density sampling, we just wanna make sure that that guy is inverted because um, that'll work well with our ISO surface. So now we've done our sampling voxels, we could go ahead and build our ISO surface. So I'm just gonna go and chuck a build ISO surface component onto um, my canvas. I'm gonna plug in the voxels um, as the bounding box. So that's the box as to which the effective range searches to at its maximum limit. Um, I'm gonna plug in the voxel data, which will you know, enable us to create that um, ISO surface. And I'm gonna go with the sample value. I'm gonna make the sample value zero, but I'm gonna make it smaller than 2.000. So the maximum is gonna be a two. Um, we wanna evaluate our sample value at zero because that gyroid equation that we were looking at earlier um, equals a zero. So that's basically, you could think of that as our ISO surface value in this little experiment that we're doing. So now I could go and preview a few of these previous things off. And you'll see we get a little kind of blobby ISO surface mesh. So it doesn't look as clean as what we're um, after just yet. Um, and one other issue that might come is you might have some small holes in the mesh. That's just the way that Chromodorus works. But it has a little tool for us that's going to enable us to close the voxel data. So I'm going to drop the close voxel data onto the canvas, plug that guy into there and that one into there. Um, and that'll help us out later on. And then we're also gonna do a quick smoothing of this um, ISO surface using Chromodorus' smoothing uh, component. I'm gonna smooth for 10 steps, I think, like that. Ooh, sorry, not 10 steps, 10 iterations. Sorry, that was a little error coming up there. So we can preview that off and that'll just smooth that mesh out. Um, so we get a bit of a blobbier and less kind of uh, voxelized outcome. Now, um, Chromodorus has this little bug you might experience where you can't see the shading of the preview mesh. So just to get around that, we can just deconstruct uh, the mesh and then reconstruct it like that. Preview those guys off. And now you'll start to see a little bit more of a um, you know lighting effect on the preview. It's just a little annoying feature in Chromodorus. So we could just start by you know previewing that and just seeing the kind of blob we're created. And we are starting to get those kind of um, ISO surfacing uh, forms that we were looking for at the start of the tutorial. But we want a bit more of an open kind of cut open uh, X-ray view of this whole thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a um, bounding box and I'll just give you guys a bit more room to see that full definition so far. We're gonna create a bounding box around the box array. I'm actually gonna right click on it quickly and create a union box that goes around all of our points. Um, and we're gonna trim this mesh out. Um, so we're basically gonna split the mesh um, so we keep the inside of that box only. So I'm firstly just gonna go and create a mesh brep out of uh, this bounding box like that. And then we're going to do a mesh split. So in that instance, we're going to split um, this mesh that we've got coming out of here. And the splitter is going to be this um, box geometry here. I'll preview those guys off. Um, and then we're gonna get two meshes as the outcome. I'm just gonna, I think it'll be list item one. So we're just gonna create an item index. I uh, know it's item two or item negative one. We could just go up here and do a positive there um, and then preview that geometry. And then we start to get, um, you know, that ISO surface that we're looking for that you easily get kind of, you know, from a similar millipede algorithm, but this time we're using Chromodorus. And it's a much faster outcome um, than what you'd usually get from millipede. So for example, we could go and adjust this number slider and very quickly we're able to kind of view uh, different you know, iterations of this mesh through Chromodorus. So this is ISO surfacing and sampling all those points um, at the same time. 
So that's it, pretty simple. You could go ahead and you know take a look at that quick algorithm as to how you create an ISO surface inside of Grasshopper. And then of course you can go and change those parameters inside of the definition and create different kind of levels of ISO surfacing within it.